Assalamu alaikum, peace and the mercy and blessings of God be with all of you. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali. In this segment for Let the Quran Speak, I want to continue my discussion on manuscripts and readings of the Quran. So in a previous uh, segment, I gave you an overview of uh, this uh, issue, and now I'd like to go into it in some more detail. Uh, a recent, uh, manu recently, a manuscript has been discovered from Sana'a in, uh, in Yemen, and it's referred to as the Sana'a manuscript. Uh, that manuscript has two layers of Quranic writing. The lower layer has been scraped off and uh, the upper layer has uh, the Quranic text written over. Now the upper layer text uh, quite closely corresponds to what Muslims are reading uh, in, in the world today as the text of the Quran. Uh, the lower text that has been scraped off has some variation from what Muslims are, are reading in today's uh, text. Uh, but those variations are not of any great significant degree that affects uh, what Muslims believe or that affects Muslim practice in any significant way. Uh, so how do we explain this uh, difference and why was that Quranic manuscript scraped off? Now it turns out that uh, in Muslim classical literature, Muslim scholars have uh, detailed that uh, some companions of the Prophet Muhammad and whom be peace recited the Quran uh, in a way that very varies from what commonly came to be recited by Muslims uh, worldwide. Why this sort of difference? It seems to me, in putting all of the information and facts together, uh, that the following uh, transpired. When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, received the revelation initially, the uh, main impetus at the moment was for people uh, to absorb the message and to know the instructions and put them into practice. It did not matter at that stage so much that the uh, w exact words of the Quran had to be relayed from one person to another. So one person could tell his neighbor, you know what, I was with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him today, and a new piece of revelation came down, and basically it says that we are to do A, or do B, or do C, or these are the instructions. Now the instructions do not have to be conveyed in the precise word in order for the instructions to be understood and for them to be carried out. And so we can well understand uh, that uh, the in initial uh, messages delivered by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, might have been rephrased by some of his companions as they transmitted that information from one person to another. Now, eventually, uh, scholars would become interested in knowing the precise wording, especially after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had passed away. And therefore, we can see that attempts were being made to compile uh, the Quran with the exact wording, especially in writing. Uh, so, uh, Omar uh, bin al-Khattab suggested to the first caliph of Islam, Abu Bakr, uh, that he should command, uh, commission a writing to be done. And so, one of the close companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Zaid bin Thabit, who himself had memorized the entire Quran, was now given instructions to go around to all of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who had written pieces of the revelation on a wide variety of materials, uh, to collect all of those pieces, to transcribe them onto uh, sheets so that we could have a, a complete copy. And that copy was kept with the Caliph Abu Bakr, and then eventually uh, the Caliph Uthman, the third Caliph of Islam, and this is within 14 to 24 years after the death of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he recalled that uh, copy. He had the further copies transcribed from it and sent to various parts of the Muslim empire after a double checking uh, effort was done by a committee, not only of Zaid bin Thabit, the one who initially uh, uh, conducted this uh, uh, search and, and find and compilation, uh, but also by uh, other persons in the committee, three other persons. Then uh, those copies having been made were sent to the various parts of the Muslim empire uh, so that uh, we have a, a standard copy which was then uh, copied further and, uh, and, and used and uh, disseminated. So how do we get then a, a palimpsest, for that's what it is called, a, a a copy of the Quran that has been uh, erased so that another copy is written over it. 
Uh, well, it's precisely because it is mentioned that when Uthman uh, commissioned uh, new copies of the Quran to be made, uh, he instructed that if anyone had uh, copies that varied from this official version, uh, then those copies should be erased, washed off, or, or scraped off, or sometimes the narratives say even burnt. Uh, that was in order to preserve the official copy, which was done not by one individual, but by a committee of persons who lived with and walked with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who knew exactly what the revelation was. However, nowadays, when uh, non-Muslims hear that, uh, oh, you guys uh, you know, destroyed some copies of the Quran, now they're curious. Academic scholars, on, uh, on the one hand, are quite curious for their own reasons. They want to know uh, the nitty-gritty, down to the very letter. How was every word pronounced? What uh, are the implications of those words? Uh, did it mean something different? They want to trace the history and origin origins of things. Did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, teach a different religion? And uh, did that religion evolve over time, as, for example, with the religion of other uh, preachers and heroes and founders of religions? Did Islam become something different from what the Prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace, envisioned? Is Islam different from the Quran as it was first promulgated? Is the current Quran exactly the same as it was first promulgated. So that's the academic interest in this. The Muslim uh, follower is also very interested because the Muslim follower has been told that the Quran as we have it now, letter for letter, dot for dot, is exactly as read by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and there is no other but this one. Uh, and a non-Muslim uh, looking at this, uh, the average non-Muslim, not one of the academics, is wondering, you know, is it possible that uh, some changes occurred or is uh, something like fishy going on here? Why did they scrape off? Why did they erase the Quran? Uh, so the simple explanation for all of this is uh, bringing me right back to where we began by saying that in the initial phase, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not insist that his companions should uh, each one, each and every one, uh, just repeat exactly the words of the Quran as he delivered it to them. He knew that there is a wide variety of persons around him. Some are more scholarly inclined, those will try to get the precise wording right and memorize it precisely from the mouth of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Some will write it down, those who are literate, they were able to write, and others will just get it by word of mouth. Uh, some will hear it roughly, and but they will know the instruction, and that's enough for them to carry out the instruction without necessarily knowing the precise wording. And it was left to a later uh, decade for the Muslim scholarship to rise to this task of saying, uh, look, people are going around reciting the Quran in a variety of wording, and we cannot attest to the validity of all of those wordings. Let's compile a, a copy of the Quran that will be checked and verified by the community at large, one to whose wording we can attest and verify that, yes, this is a valid representation uh, of the authentic revelation that was given to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And once we have that authentic revelation, now we know that uh, we it can safely discard of the others, and not only can we safely discard of the others, but we should discard of the discard the others, uh, so that uh, they do not continue to remain in circulation and confuse the person who is trying to get the genuine revel revelation. So once that copy, which is known to be a genuine revelation, has been prepared, it was necessary then uh, to erase the others. Nowadays, of course, if something like this happens, we would keep the old copies in museums and we are trying to recover those old copies and study them. But that was not the impetus at the time. People did not go around thinking, okay, let's have a museum of artifacts of old copies uh, of the Quran. Their main concern at the time was to make sure that they have a genuine and authentic copy of the Quran that was verified by the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that they could copy and circulate to, to all corners of the globe. And in order to make sure that this is the one that is known and circulated, they had to 
de-emphasize the others to the extent of even erasing some and uh, uh, burning uh, some. Not, much, not with any bad intention, not for any fishy purpose, but only for the purpose of preserving the genuine one. And so we are thankful to God that the genuine one has been preserved and passed on uh, to uh, all generations so that now we have this Quran uh, that is recited in a variety of recitations and with slight variations in, in, uh, in uh, very uh, small particles of the Arabic language uh, that uh, do not change the meaning of the Quran uh, in any significant way so that the, the uh, matters of Muslim belief are not affected by these variations and a Muslim practice is also not affected by any significant degree. More can be said about this with uh, some actual examples to explain uh, the differences, uh, but we'll have to leave that for another segment in the future. For now, I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali. To hear more about what we discuss and to see our television broadcast, uh, go to our website, www.quranspeaks.com. There you'll find our YouTube link uh, to past episodes of our show. There you can also send us a question uh, and your donation, for that is how we keep this show going and we can continue to offer the knowledge as we do. Thank you for watching. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.